Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Resident Evil clone in Unity and welcome to episode 2. This tutorial we're going to focus on actually adding some graphics to our game in the form of textures and materials. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload for this awesome series and indeed every other series I upload on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So textures and materials, what are they exactly? Well, as I explained in the last tutorial, everything that we bring in here is an asset. So indeed, a texture and a material would also be an asset. So let's start organizing our project window down here with the assets so we can actually kind of visualize a little bit more where things should sit, keep it neat and tidy. So to do that, what we'll do is down here, make sure we have assets clicked and right click here and you'll be presented with a fairly large menu. Most of it we don't need to worry about at all for now. We can just go to create and then click on folder at the very top. Let's name this folder textures. So textures are basically just images that you can use to apply to game objects. In this case, the cube that we have right here. So let's go into our textures folder and I'm going to drag and drop two images, which are textures that you can do the same with. So here in this folder, I have these two textures that I'm going to select and I'm going to drag and drop them into Unity and into here. You can get these textures on my website, which is in the description of this video. Head over there, click on the downloads and assets section, click on the Resident Evil series and under tutorial number two, you'll be able to find these two textures. It's worth noting that you need to unzip those textures before you can import them into Unity. You can't import anything from a zipped file. So now we have these two textures, there are different ways that we can manipulate them to apply them to game objects. In this case, this cube, like I've said. So this is kind of like a floor at the moment. So let's use this floor texture on this cube. There's a couple of different ways that we can do it. Now we can drag and drop this texture onto this cube, but when we do, we end up with another folder with an automatically created material. So this texture right here isn't actually the texture on the material. The process for all of this is the texture is applied to a material, which is this right here in the materials folder. And that material is then applied to this game object because that is the component we see over here. So the material is a component of each game object. Now we can use this material in many different ways and create many different effects, depending on how we manipulate it within the material. We can either click on this little arrow here whilst having the game object selected that will expand the component, or we can directly manipulate the, comp the component of the material by clicking the material itself. So let's experiment a little bit with how we can manipulate this particular game object and the material attached to it. If we zoom in with, to it using the middle mouse wheel, you'll see that it is very flat. It's, it looks okay, but it's flat, kind of smooth. If we were to change the lighting on it and rotate it back around, we'd be able to see if I actually change it the correct way, we should be able to see that all of the uh, reflection is just kind of exactly that, it's reflective. So all I've got now is the light shining directly on it and it just looks a little bit odd to say the least. Um, it's bland, it's plain. We need to make this look kind of cool. How do we do that? Well, firstly, if we go to our textures folder again, and that floor texture, if we click on it and hold control down and press the letter D on your keyboard, it will make a duplicate of that. It may automatically rename it to floor 002. However, we don't want it to be floor 002. We need it to be floor 001 and then the letter N, as we can see. So the N stands for something called normal map. So a normal map, is something that we can select in texture type up here. So make sure you have the texture selected here. And over here at the very top, we have texture type. Change it from default to normal map. Then click on create from grayscale and you'll have a couple of different options, but we're gonna leave them as default just for now. Then click on apply and it will turn it a kind of a purple color. A normal map is a way of allowing light to kind of 
give off rough reflections on the material to give it a much more 3D depth. Even though it's still flat, the way a normal map will work, as you can see, it's kind of bumpy. It will apply that bumpy texture to that material to allow the light to reflect off it a little bit better. So if we go to our material, and if we click on the material itself, the options we have are albedo, and that is the actual texture itself. Metallic, which we can change, we could also apply a metallic texture, much in the same way we're about to with a normal map. Smoothness and the source, which will change to make it look even better in a moment. So normal map is the one we want to deal with. So having our material selected, head back to the textures folder and then drag and drop that purple one, which is floor 001N, into this little box here. And you'll see it changes instantly in your scene. You can also select a normal map by clicking the little radial button there and just finding it in the list that it brings up. You can also search for it right here, floor 001N and then you can select it from there. So although it's applied that weird looking roughness to it and gives it a little bit more depth, we can further manipulate that by changing the normal map here. If we were to change the normal map here back to zero, it would revert it to its original form while still having that normal map attached. That means that we can gradually change any section, inverse or adverse as it were, so we could have it minuscule, so maybe 0 0.1, just have a slight rough texture. 0 0.2, gets a bit rougher again, 0 0.3, and you can see just how much you can run with this. So next thing, let's take a look at our metallic and smoothness. You could change the source from metallic alpha to albedo alpha, and you'll see just how much that then gives a further reflection from the lighting. So depending on what kind of floor you want to have and what kind of atmosphere you're aiming for, it might be worth selecting albedo. The color we also have here, we can also change it and you can see just how much of an impact that has on our floor. So even though this texture is just basically two colors, we can manipulate it further to be different colors if we want it to. Remember as well, changing the color of your light will also help, but we'll go into lights in the next tutorial anyway. Having this color as white, pure white, means that it is its original form. So let's adjust the metallic up a little and all the way and back down. And if we have it pretty much all the way and bring the smoothness down, you can see just how much it changes from one to the other. Now it's obviously worth experimenting with these more than you would think because ultimately it's gonna bring you a lot more detail, especially when we get to something called post-processing, which will be in the future of this series. So I'm going to play around with these settings just for now and we'll see where we get to. So I think that'll do just for now. If we go further down, we can click emission and it's not going to make too much of a difference at the moment. This kind of thing only really affects it when we get into deep detail of graphics, but it's worth ticking just for now. Tiling is where we can actually tile this particular texture several times over one specific object. So at the moment, it's just applied one type of this texture all the way. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. You'll see on this texture, it's eight squares by eight squares. If we change the tiling here to, let's say, two by two, it's applied two across the X and two across the Y. So it's effectively applied four of those textures onto the material, onto this object. So once again, if we were to do it four by four, we would then have 16 of those placed all across. Now this doesn't always work because you need kind of like a flowing texture. It's known as a seamless texture. This particular floor texture is seamless, so it will work. So I'm going to change it back to two by two just for now. A couple of other options, but they aren't massively important, especially at the moment, because for now, what I want to do is just build up an area using some cool mechanics and cool graphics just to at least get a playable area ready and we can build up our Resident Evil game from there. So we have the floor. That's great. Perfect. It looks OK. Mm, could look better, but it will look better in the future. Rest assured. So next thing, let's take a look at something called snap settings 
because we can use that to duplicate our floor and make it flow seamlessly. What are snap settings? Well, if we click our object here, we can move it just by using those arrows, no problem. Using snap settings allows us to shift it in a great direction and make it perfectly match things. So if we go to edit and then go to um, project settings and it is down in, gosh, I can't, oh, it's there. It's all right, not project settings, <laughs> snap settings. I did say snap settings, didn't I? So we can change our snap settings on the X, Y, and Z. Now these three top ones are the ones that we'll be deal with uh, probably the most. So if we change this to one by one by one, you may have that uh, by default, and then click on the X. And now if we hold down control and press D to duplicate this cube, it will make a duplicate obviously. And now continue to hold down control and then move the arrow to make this floor move alongside. So you can see it's shifting in large chunks. And if we look at the position over here, we can see it moving one at a time. That is the snap. We're snapping it to whatever we've stated in our snap settings. There we go. So now these two objects line up absolutely perfectly. There is absolutely nothing in between them. They're perfectly aligned. And that is how snap settings work. Because if we were to just kind of move this one, we'd, we'd miss off a little bit. You know, we can't get it perfectly. As I say, look at that there. We're not quite where it should be. So I'm going to hold control, press Z to undo. So if we go back to our snap settings, edit snap settings, I'm going to change it to 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. And now it will move by half every time. So I'm going to hold control and press D on this cube again to duplicate it. And then I'm going to move this. And you can see up here in the snap settings, it's moving 0.5 at a time when we move it. So let's bring it and snap it to there. Perfect. So now that's all perfectly aligned. Excellent. That's what we're looking for. So now let's take a moment to actually rename a couple of things in our hierarchy to keep them consistent. So let's go on here, right click, and let's rename floor 001. Let's rename this one floor 002, and let's rename this one floor 003. Now it doesn't matter too much about what some of these object names are called because you can kind of group them together, but we'll do that, as I said, at some point in this series anyway, just to make it make more sense. So the next thing we're going to do is make a wall. So we've learned how to do all of this. We can use the same mechanics and same logic that we used previously to make a wall, let's say in this section here. So let's take this floor, 003, hold control and press D to duplicate. And let's drag it this way. So it aligns perfectly. And let's rename and call this wall 001. So how do we make this wall look like a wall? Well, at the moment we have the scale as 20 by one by 20. So we need to increase this to act a little bit more like a wall. So let's have the scale on the Y as 10. And then let's drag this up and it looks pretty tall for a wall. So we can see here that this wall is not going to be the same kind of feeling as whatever we have for the floor because it's a different kind of shape. So what we need to do is probably decrease how this looks because we're not going to be able to uh, tile it in the same way. However, let's see where we get to with this. So let's apply our wall texture to our object, but let's not do it the same way. Let's do it a different way to see what we can do in Unity. So let's go to our materials folder, right click, create, and then let's go to material create the material manually. Let's call this wall 001. And then let's click on our little button next to albedo. And then let's select our wall 001 texture there. Perfect. So now let's apply this material to our object. So it's upside down. Brilliant. Let's change that. If we go around here, we'll see that the other side isn't upside down. 
And if we go around to the next one, we'll also see that it's not upside down. So because this is going to be a walkable area and outside isn't going to be visible to a camera, we can rotate this by 90 degrees. So you could always do that if you wanted to. But why would you need to do that when you can just type in minus 90 and it will flip it by negative 90 degrees to make sure both of these facing sides actually look normal. So next thing to do is let's change this wall a little bit because I feel that it's probably a little bit too big for what we need it for. So I'm going to reduce the scale to 10 by 5 by 10. So it comes a little bit smaller. So depending on how our character reacts into this when we bring the character in, we may need to change a couple of things at a later date. You can see when we align it here, it just doesn't quite look right. So it might be wise having our character uh, scaled to the right scale. So we, when we bring in the character, we may need to change some of these here. But for now, I probably should revert this back to 20 by 10 by 20. So let's keep it all consistent for now. Or we could just hold control and press Z a couple of times to set it back to what it was. So let's quickly do what we did for the floor and let's create a normal map. So hold control, press D on wall 001. Rename it to wall 001N. Texture type will be normal map, grayscale and apply. And let's modify this uh, material directly on the object. So let's drag and drop that normal map to there. And let's change the source to albedo. Let's have a mission set as uh, on, ready for the future. And let's also change our metallic and smoothness to kind of be a little bit more relative with how it looks. And let's have the normal map set to about the same as what the floor is. So 0.3. And let's take a look at what we have on the floor. So 0.3. So let's change these two to probably about maybe 0 0.75, 0 0.75 on the floor. So let's do the same for the wall. 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So now we're actually getting somewhere. It may still look a little bit bland, but don't worry. Don't worry at all. There is a lot that we'll do with this to make it look kind of cool. So for now, let's hold control, press D to duplicate. And let's bring this wall over here. And then let's bring it this way to kind of create an enclosed space. It might also be wise to kind of cover any possible boundaries that you may break here because you could end up getting just a little bit of light through the side here. So for all intents and purposes, it might be handy to align that wall there and that's your safety buffer and then hold control press d and bring this wall to align perfectly there so we'll leave that there for now we've started learning a lot about this already and how games can look it's probably worth pointing out that whatever the camera doesn't see in a game what the camera never sees doesn't matter too much it looks a bit messy up here but don't forget the camera is never going to see it if we click the camera now, we can see exactly what it sees. But we'll deal with cameras probably in the next tutorial anyway. So, uh, like I say, guys, you build up what you can here. Learn a little bit more about textures. Play around with them. You're not going to break anything, let's be honest. It's pretty cool and easy to play around with. Uh, next tutorial, we're going to deal with cameras and lighting to make things look even cooler. So, until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.